Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nick here, and I'm here to discuss something important, and that I think that a lot of people don't really know the full picture of just yet. And, well, I'm talking about the crash that happened on the Boston College line yesterday, July 31st, 2021. And now, in this video, I'm going to basically be covering what exactly has been discussed and what has happened thus far. And by no means uh, is what I say definitive fact. This is all either, this is all just what I know of and what has been pushed out so far. There's still a thorough investigation going on about this whole incident. So what I say right now is just take it with a grain of salt because what could be out there right now could be changed either tomorrow or a few months from now or whatever. So just keep that in mind. But basically, what exactly happened the other day on the Boston College line? Now, mind you, I was actually working when this happened. I was on my 15-minute break, and that's I was doing something and whatever. But basically, I overheard over the radio, one of the operators was in a frantic panic state, and they were crying and everything, and it was really garbled, so I couldn't really understand what they were saying. But basically something had happened on the green line. I couldn't quite tell where the location was or anything like that since, well, as I heard this, I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? And I couldn't really quite process it since it was all happening so very fast in real time. But basically, what we know of as of right now is pretty interesting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up one of the news articles that has been written by WCVB News Center 5 on the whole incident. So what happened was that, so this article by WCBV, WCVB News Center 5 was published on July 31st, 2021, and the last it was updated was 1.25 a.m. today. And well, it, the headline is, this should not happen. MBTA general manager says after 25 people are injured in the Green Line trolley crash in Boston. And well, what happened was is that more than 20 people were injured after two Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority Green Line trolleys were involved in a crash along Commonwealth Avenue near Aganis Arena. Now, where exactly that is, is it's near Boston University. And the reason how I know that is because, well, I've been to many Boston University hockey games, and that's where they play at home. Aganis Arena is their home stadium, if you might. A total of 25 people suffered non-life-threatening injuries, according to Boston EMS, after the crash involved two MBTA vehicles in the 900 block of Commonwealth Avenue between Babcock Street and Harry Aganis Way. And we have our safety department on the scene currently conducting an investigation, the MBTA general manager, Steve Povic, said. And this should not happen, and we will find out why it happened and ensure it won't happen again. And, this just, and the scene shows... Like a Green Line trolley 3705 with severe damage to one end of the unit, with one part of the trolley being bent in, like you know how the you know how the Type Sevens are like slanted at the front. It's basically flat now, and it has shattered glass on the front windshield, and there's also damage to Green Line trolley 3697. Now, what exactly this means is that given there's there's damage to two trains. We can understand that this was a trolley-on-trolley -trolley collision, basically a head-on slash rear-end collision. So basically what happened was that there was a train stopped at a light nearby, I think it was, a, well, like a, like the story said, a Gannis Way, whatever it was, and the train basically smacked into it, and that's basically what happened. Now, witnesses say the two Green Line, uh, B-Line trolley vehicles were headed outbound when the collision happened. The train was stopped at the light when it suddenly jerked forward, MBTA pass passenger Brian Sermon said who was on the train. It felt like the worst amusement park ride that you can imagine, just jerking you forward. I didn't fall out of my seat, other than bumping my head on the metal bar behind me, Sermon said. Everyone else who was on the seats or standing ended up on the floor. Now, if you have stuff like that, this means this was a pretty severe crash if you are literally throwing people to the floor from a violent collision like this. Now, initially, this person thought that the crash was due to a mechanical failure, and I hadn't realized we were hit until I was leaving the scene and saw the end of the second car smashed in, which is absolutely insane if you ask me. Basically, well, the 
um, MBTA general manager said that we will leave the trains in place until we get sign off from not only our internal safety department, for, but from our other partners. Because, well, they can't just take them away because technically this is a quote unquote crime scene, if you must, because, well, they need to con they need to figure out how exactly this happened. Looking further down here, we can see that shuttle buses did replace B-Line service from Kenmore to Washington Street due to the collision. And that was playing all throughout the all throughout the night as I was working at Haymarket that night. Another article here said something pretty interesting: is that the employee, the operator that was involved in the crash that smashed into the other train, has been placed on administrative leave and has been with the MBTA for seven years, which is pretty interesting. Now, given that, there is some speculation that I do have as to how exactly this happened. Now, of course, I'm just going to give a simple recap of what we know. So, two Green Line trolleys collided near Gannis Arena on the Boston College line. 25 people were injured with non-life-threatening injuries, and the operator has been put on an administrative leave and until the investigation is complete. And my guess is that he will either be fired or will have the ability to continue working, depending on what the outcome of this investigation is. And well, I have a few specul- I have some speculation as to how exactly this crash occurred. Now, for those of you who might not know, a crash like this has happened before. It happened way back in 2008. Now, I also do have an article here, which is on Wikipedia, and it's the 2008 Massachusetts train collision. And on May 28th, 2008, shortly before 6 p.m., same time, mind you, two westbound trains on the MBTA Green Line D branch collide between Woodland and Wobbin stations near 56 Dor Dorset Road in Newton, Massachusetts. In the, invest in the investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board originally found the cause of the accident to be due to the operator texting while driving. Now, we all know texting while driving is a big no-no, and I think that texting while driving a train is an even bigger no-no because you are responsible for, for a whole lot more people because who knows how many people were on that train. And well, basically, the NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, found the operator of the rear train, Therese Edmonds, had not been using her cell phone at the time of the crash, but rather went into an episode of microsleep, causing her to lose her awareness of her surroundings and miss potential hazards up ahead. And the collision killed Edmonds, and numer numerous other people were injured, and 14 passengers were taken to area hospitals, and one was airlifted, which is crazy. And the crash, along with other similar, along with a similar accident a year later, led, led to the NTSB to set a higher standard and regulations regarding the use of cell phones while operating a train. And basically, from this incident, basically the MBTA came to the conclusion that we need to just get rid of cell phone use on the green line because post editor Nick here, I just want to point out that this was implemented system wide, not just on the green line, but on the red line, the orange line, the blue line, the buses, and even the commuter rail. This accident in 2008 was just devastating. One person died, and at least 14 others were hospitalized, and one person was airlifted, mind you. And so, given that, I can, I can assume that this incident couldn't probably... Now, the reason why I say probably is because I'm not quite sure. Like I said, they're still doing a thorough investigation on this. I probably think that the operator could not have been on their phone, given that the phone policy has been in act for over a decade now. And, well, the only other, like, the only other options I could think could either be mechanical failure, i.e. the brakes fail, propulsion failure, and by that I mean brake failure, obviously the brakes don't work, and propulsion failure, I mean is that either something in the propulsion, like, system gets stuck and can makes the train continue to go forward. I mean, well, if if that happens, the operator could have just pressed the brakes. But it could have been both, mind you. Or it could have been a combination of operator error, either not paying attention, and it also could have been mechanical failure. We don't quite know what exactly has happened, and this story is still developing and getting more complex as we know it. And I will be making follow-up videos on this incident and what exactly happens. And when the full story is out, I will be making a deep dive into what exactly happened 
so all of you at home can figure out for yourself what exactly happened. And well, for those of you out there, those of you who enjoyed what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe. It would help me as a creator out. If you want to get some sweet, snazzy t-shirts like the one I have on right now, then you can also get that using the link in the description below. The t-shirt that I'm wearing right now is a limited time only. I'm only going to be selling them for about two more, two more weeks, and I'm going to be discontinuing the holograph line. I will be replacing it with something else. I don't quite know yet. But all in all, if you guys enjoyed what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe. And that is it for me. This is Nick Dalton, signing off. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!